really glad that I did the program over Christmas because I still enjoyed every holiday party that we went to. I still enjoyed hanging out with friends and family. I just didn't eat the same food that they did because I was in the elimination diet, but I wasn't left out of anything. But it's kind of nice to know every year when that goes by, it's like, you know, I could be doing this all the time. I did it once. I could do it again. All right, ladies, uh, welcome back to another episode. So this one is going to be fun. We're going to talk with one of my past clients, Caitlin Hansen, which we don't often bring past clients on. The last one we brought on um, was well over a year ago, um, just because I always want to honor your guys' um, desire <laughs> to come on the podcast. But I love to share your stories because I think that it gives possibility to other women. If they see, oh, she did it, I can do it too. And it's one thing for me to share your stories, right? But I mean, I guess technically I could just be making stuff up. I'm not, but I guess I could be. So to have you guys come on and share it face to face, I think is really important for other women to see. So I would love for you to kind of give a little bit of an introduction and then we can dive right into like what kind of brought you to my world in terms of struggling with hormones. So my name is Caitlin, past client of Leah's and the alumni, or I should say alumni, alumni of the Hormone Reset Program. And yeah, it was a crazy whirlwind getting to you. Happy that I know what I know now. <laughs> yeah. um, but the Caitlin of 2018 to 2022 was just, she was doing her best, but um, crazy symptoms, everything from like five months of straight bleeding for a period to can't really sleep at night to I've weighed the same amount of weight for an entire year and nothing that I do will fix it. No calorie deficit. Like I, I feel like I can't outrun myself on the treadmill. Like as much as I try, nothing will budge to just like constantly feeling tired. And for me specifically, just like a lot of like anger and not knowing how to like stress manage things. Mm -hmm. So, um, we could touch on all of these because all of these are yeah. so important. But the one that sometimes I think women don't relate to hormones is anger. They think that I just am, you know, touched out, overstimulated. I need better self-management or more willpower or whatever. But truly, like, our first response should not be to, like, want to fly off the handle, you know. But when things are out of balance, it's you feel, it's almost like you feel out of control of those emotions. Like, can you kind of walk me through like, then what, what made you go, okay, maybe it's hormones, you know, cause that's a lot of different things going on. Totally. Um, so I, for I'm trying to think of the timeline, but from like 20, 21, all the way till 2022, I was not able to lose any weight. And I'd recently gotten engaged, which is so exciting, <laughs> but I was like, you know, all of those symptoms stacked up together in May of 2022. Once we got I engaged, um, I was like, I can't go on with this. And I'd actually seen your TikToks a couple of times. <laughs> and then um, I actually went and saw a medical medium with energy work. Okay. I know. I know what you're talking about. And she, because I'd like been to the doctor, all of my labs were normal. Everything was totally fine. I just needed to lose weight, even though I couldn't. Um and she was like, yeah, no, your estrogen is like crazy high. I would recommend going like the naturopathic route. Like she could just pick that up in my energy and like thyroid issues, things like that. And so um, I just told the universe, I was like, just please send me someone who's going to give me my answers that I need. And then that night you were the only like you were the first three scrolls on TikTok. And I was like, OK, this is my sign. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> yeah. And so then I, um, from that point, reached out to you over Instagram, went over all the things, filled out the pre-fill. And then I listened, there was like a month and a half waiting period before the next um, program started. Yeah, I remember that. And so I, that whole time I just like studied your podcast. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be prepared jumping into it. Cause I was truthfully at a point that I was like, I'm giving this everything I have. I'm investing in this. I'm giving it like, I am committing to this because if it'll change my life, like I'm locked in, I'm all in. I have to give you credit for that, Caitlin. You, um, you are the person, you know, in all of our programs that sees results. It's because you jump in with both feet and you're like, tell me what to do and I'm going to do it. And it 
that the thing is this method works, you know, the hormone reset really, really works and you just have to show up for it. That's it. That's like literally it. We will walk you through the rest of it. And sometimes it's hard in different seasons of your life, you know, sometimes to be able to do that. But you definitely jumped in with two feet. You were like, I'm ready to learn. Tell me all the things. And you started implementing all the things. I remember when you started doing a deep dive into like personal care products. And you're like, did you know all the bad stuff that's in my skincare? <laughs> it's seriously though, because until you're aware of it, you have no idea. And then once you're aware of it, you're like, oh, this is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I also think that you aren't alone in the fact that like, it was after you got engaged. I, I see that a lot with women. They're like, they put their health on the back burner and it's the back burner, it's the back burner. And then they get engaged and they go, ooh, I'm going to get married. I want to have kids. I want to like show up for this person like the way I want to show up for them. And then that's when, you know, they really start to make that health more of a priority. So was there anything that was a shocker that we had to like start implementing for your protocol? You go, I never in a million years thought I'd be doing this. Just the industry that I worked in, like I work in the finance industry. So it's a very like masculine energy and grind and circadian rhythm and all the things. So the weirdest thing to me was a non-negotiable being my bedtime is now 10 PM. Yeah. Which means that like, I'm going to have to leave the office early. I'm going to, because I need all the prep time to get up to that bedtime being 10 PM. I can't just like wake up one morning and be like, Oh, today I'm going to go to bed at 10. It's like, well, there's a lot of steps to do that. So it was the non-negotiable of sleep time. But I guess for me, no one had ever taught me how to like eat properly. So it was like half a plate of fiber, a fourth a plate of protein, and then the other fourth being the carbs and fats. Like I was just conditioned as a child that like fats were just like, stay away from them. They're bad. Cut them out. No, 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 no to fats. That it was kind of like, that whole thought process had to change. It was like, oh no, I actually need to eat macadamia nuts with breakfast or avocado and at lunch and at dinner. Yeah. Yeah. And you've changed jobs like halfway through the program or at the tail end of the program, somewhere in there. I remember you changed jobs. Yes. I went from sales to being a director of operations. So it was less client facing and like commission based to salary schedule. And it, it works great. Yeah, less less stressful. I think in the beginning, I remember that being like a really big conversation that we constantly had was managing stress and what that looked like. And, you know, for everybody, it's not necessarily that they have to go to bed at 10, but like for you and your goals, that was a really big thing we had to implement because you were you were wired <laughs> a lot <laughs> of the time. <laughs> I was. Yeah, which is not uncommon when you work in a job like that, where it's, you know, go, 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 you're on 100% of the time. And it's so interesting to me that when we work at a job like that, you know, and it, it is very like masculine in terms of, um, and I'm not saying that we can't work those jobs. I'm just saying it's, you have to be conscious of the different rhythms. And, you know, you started having all these symptoms like nonstop bleeding, right? And it's like a very rude smack in the face of like, hello, <laughs> we actually have a cycle over here and we need to pay attention to it and we're not happy. Tell me about the food part because I always find that interesting to hear from your standpoint because I talk about blood sugar balance on here until the cows come in. And so everybody knows the have a plate and then the quarter protein, but then we're actually looking at your meals every single day and helping you tweak it specifically to like, your digestion and your mood and your energy and your needs. And what was that like having that um, day-to-day, like real-time feedback on your nutrition and food? Oh, that was amazing. That was a service I could have paid for for the rest of my life because I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> what I loved about it was, as you always met me where I was, so if I was out for a week traveling, it was like, okay, what is realistic? How, like, if all we've got is not necessarily fast food, but like, how can we pack a lunch to go? Or if it really is last minute and we have to eat and everything else fell for the day, like, what is our one, like, back safe option to say, okay, we can do this? That was huge. And also just like, Sometimes my schedule would change that day. So it'd be like, Leah, I'm so stressed out. I was going to do this for dinner, but how do I do this? 
and you just swooped in like, okay, we're going to go. Um, I forget. There was a certain restaurant, but you're like, okay, go here. I think it was, I had to get Qdoba that night. And you were like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh. they put, they forgot to put the rice in it, but I have an orange. And you're like, that's okay. Sometimes they put too much rice in that. So <laughs> does it matter? I have become a master at like these, some of these restaurants and like how we can get them to fit to whatever you want. It's just, you know, simple tweaks. And I think the thing is when you eat out, I know some people might shoot me for saying this, but um, I don't demand perfection. You know, some people are like, I will not eat out unless it's 100% gluten-free. It's 100% dairy-free. It has no seed oils. It has blankety, 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 blank. And I'm like, okay, well, let's like compare these options. So are you going to go out with your fiance and enjoy community and enjoy that relationship and enjoy building that common ground with him? That's amazing for your nervous system. And we're going to have some seed oils in our food for one meal. Or Are we going to be like, no, I can't do that because I can't eat there. And then we're going to be hungry and then we're going to get hangry. And then we're not going to have that time for our nervous system. We're not going to be building that relationship. You know, I, I think we have to not always demand perfection. Like not every meal has to be perfect. Not every day has to be perfect. If like 90% of your day is great, great. But if like 70% of your day is starting to go downhill, then we need to start paying attention. And I think when we can let go, I think that was the biggest thing for you because you came from that diet culture too. And you're like, I'm going to eat my nuts. I'm going to eat fats and I'm going to eat carbs. Like what? I can't do that. Um, And so it was a lot of like release, release, release that you don't have to be so perfect at everything to get those results. And it depends on also like your healing journey. Cause like sometimes we have some people with such severe gut issues that like they have to be really strict for a short period of time while they heal that gut. But I think there's all of that wiggle room. What was your favorite part? My favorite part, um, it was the first time in like two years that I actually got to just like be and relax. More of what I did through the hormone program or hormone reset program was focus re- a lot on the nutrition and the stress management techniques. Cause every week we'd have those meetings and you'd have someone come in and show us how to like breathe for your pelvic floor, or how to like do um, EFT tapping. So it was nice to just know that for the first time in two years, I could just go on a walk at night with like music in, relax, not have it be like a speed walk or with weights or anything like that. And like the cool thing about that is from the time that I started until like halfway through, because I think it was like four and a half months, I'd lost 20 pounds and hadn't even worked out. Yep. 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 I remember that. (laughs) I remember you're like, what is this? (laughs) What is this sorcery? (laughs) So tell me about your periods, because I know your periods normalized. You know, we stopped bleeding for five months at a time. It was kind of wonky the first month just because like you're onboarding, you're figuring it out, you know, and then you go right into the elimination diet. So that next cycle would have been in January. That was like, I knew that I for sure ovulated because of the temperature gauge. And we also did, that's when I Dutch did the Dutch test. And I was like, that was like, I mean, I wasn't trying to get pregnant at the time, but I like turned to my fiance and I was like, Jake, I'm ovulating. I need it there. <laughs> Like, this is how you fix your period. Like, That's great, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so funny to see the relationships as you guys go through this because as we see these wins and we celebrate, you know, they see better mood. They see us happier. They see us, you know, feeling more stable and more aligned. But we're over here like, I ovulated. Um, I had someone tell me yesterday that she pooped three times, like solid bowel movements in a day. And she was so excited. And she was telling her husband that her drainage pathways were amazing. And she goes, he was not even remotely interested in my pooping habits. (laughs) And I'm like, but that's exciting. That's really good progress. I will say for my I I guess you said like what was a weird thing that you learned earlier. Um, I was always an every other day movement person until the program. And that itself made such a difference 
Yep. Well, you gotta have those regular bowel movements over here. Was there anything tricky about like navigating that with your fiance or explaining? Did you like talk to him about any of that or like how was he walking that journey with you? He's honestly a great guy. He was super supportive and everything. Um, I think what got to be like the trickiest was the endocrine disruptors because they're everywhere. So we went from like, I would say it like saves you money to be non-toxic because we went from having like 10 plus cleaners, like a multi-surface cleaner to a wood oil polisher and like all of these things stacked on stack to like, we just use Dr. Bronner's for a lot or like the cleaning solution one. Um, and so it was kind of like that adjustment of like, we're not going to use Dawn dish soap anymore. We're going to use, I think we use Molly suds for a little bit and for laundry too. And because I traveled all the time, I was constantly like in and out of hotels. So I actually just brought my own sheets because <laughs> I was like, you know what? I, I'm not going to freak out about it. I'm just going to bring my own sheets. And then I, I know that those are non-toxic. Yeah. I think that the endocrine disruption is like one of, or the changes in that is one of the things that may be the hardest for like fiancés, boyfriends, spouses. Um Because they're kind of like, you can cook your food, you can do whatever. But as you're making that change, like, I want to make sure my dish detergent still works. If you're switching it, are you sure it's going to work? Is this going to clean my clothes? Is my, are my sheets going to stink? Are you going to stink? Like all of these things um, that I, they always bring up or, you know, they fight because they've used the same deodorant since they were 14. So why would they change? And it, Jake was a, what was it? It's, um, it wasn't Axe, but it was like Old Spice or something is, was his like religious deodorant. And we did the, um, armpit detox together with like the Benetite clay. I was like, it'll be a fun weekend activity. <laughs> and he bought into it. So he did it with me. Now we use, um, the little seed farm, I think is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Little seed farm. Okay. What scent do you use? I like the blue lotus one that's newer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I did buy that one. That was like a limited edition one. I, I think. Mm-hmm. Or maybe that was blue tansy. Or, yeah. Bl- blue lotus is the limited edition because I think blue tansy is still out there. Yeah. It smells good. It smells good. Every time she's like, I have a new scent. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. Let me try that one too. <laughs> But those things last forever. (laughs) So then I end up on having like six different scents of deodorant. I'm like, well, I'm set for the next three years. (laughs) Um, But I do really like their deodorant. What do you feel like was hands down one of the biggest movers in your health journey? You harp on it for a reason. It's the balanced blood sugar eating. Like I, as a client, as a client who did it and who listened, (laughs) Within a week, my anxiety was almost gone. Once I cut out um, gluten because I had had a sensitivity prior, like that was a big key. I just feel so anxious when I eat it. Um, And so just realizing like you might not have like a full blown like celiac, but you could have some sensitivities to food if you have them a lot. Um, But even just eating for balance, even like snacks, like at work, I'll have a protein shake and some macadamia nuts and carrots like every like twice a day. And the protein was also a huge thing. I remember when I first started eating enough protein, I realized that I was just a carbs girl. I did not Mm -hmm. have veggies or protein in the house. (laughs) Um, and I just, there will go, there will be days where like, I am like, man, like I kind of feel lightheaded or I don't know if I did enough. And it's like, Oh, well, I forgot my protein shake today at work. That's why, or just different things like that. Protein is such a game changer. And, and the thing is, like, I harp on blood sugar balance because, like, for that reason, it makes such a difference in everybody's lives. But mastering it in your specific life is, like, the game changer. Because I will have people say things like, I've been balancing my blood sugar and I haven't noticed a difference. And I'm like, let me look at your meals. <laughs> because sometimes, We just don't think, we think one thing and we're doing another and, you know, it really is just fine tuning it specifically to your body's metabolic needs and getting those proteins in. I also remember, and I'd love for you to share this from your perspective, um, where we kind of had to find a little bit of balance for you 
because once you dove, you dove all into the health stuff and then you were like, okay, now I'm starting to feel like I'm nervous if I don't do things right. Or if I'm around people that like have all of these artificial fragrances and what if it's going to like undo my progress and give me headaches and blah, blah, blah. And so we kind of had to get, okay, like great awareness, but like, let's come back to realistic. And what was that kind of like for you to swing from one side to the other for a second? You really just kind of have to pick, I would say the breathing techniques and the EFT tapping of like, and you had said once when we went over the endocrine disruptors, like the most important thing is when you're resting and recovering is at home when you're sleeping, that that's non-toxic. Um, and in an environment that you can control, but when like you're out in the world and you can't control that, you're just kind of almost in a sense, you're still aware, but you're surrendering to like, I guess I'm going to use the toxic soap today at work. Or I guess I'm going to like, I'm going to hug my aunt who douses herself <laughs> in perfume because I love her. Like, yeah. But I'm going to know like when I go home tonight in my controlled space, like that's where I'll be non-toxic and I've done everything else and I'm eating all the food. So like this is the soul part of living and this is the soul part of life. And then it doesn't make it scary because I mean, not that it is scary, but you do get to a point where you're like so hyper aware and you're going down every rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. And we have to come back. We have to come back from the rabbit holes um, and make sure we're we're good to go. How do you feel about sustainability? Like, how do you feel like when you walked away from the program, like you're like, okay, I actually feel like I can stay with this to stay with my results, et cetera. I think it's, if it's still at the four month mark, like that pretty much becomes like your daily habit. And for me, because I was like, I never want to feel like I did before going into this program the blood sugar balance is like 100%. I can nail that pretty much most of the time. Like there are some days that I don't, but for the most part I do. So that is really sustainable. I mean, everybody gets stressed out in your life. And sometimes you'll have like, a re- you'll have to remind yourself like, all right, what are the tools that you have? Like today you've had a couple stressful days. Like what are our tools? Um, I would say total sustainability. There's nothing in the program that's like, this is complete. Like, it's not like you're asking me to work out every single day for an hour. It's it being like, well, that's just not going to be realistic at all the phases of my life. There's nothing in it that is like, you couldn't do this every day. And the four months that you're in the program, like my fiance broke his collarbone two months in. Oh yeah. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay now. Um, <laughs> But I just remember like it was during the elimination diet over Christmas, he broke his collarbone and like he couldn't lift more than five pounds. So I was cooking all this food from home and cleaning it. And I just remember you saying like, it's just a season. And that kind of helps with that mindset of like, okay, I'm going to be the person that does more of this right now, but three months from now I won't be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. The pro we actually have lengthened it. It's actually six months right now. Just because we want it to take everybody through two full cycles. So it takes, you know, those 90 days to see that reset. And we found that most people feel the most comfortable. Like, let's say it takes them a couple of weeks to acclimate. Then they feel the most com- comfortable kind of like heading back into their, I mean, it's not like they're heading back into their life, but continuing their life without, you know, talking to us every day, you know, cause we kind of talk a lot. <laughs> so you know, we don't want you to feel like all of a sudden you you lost your lifeline there. And I think that the seasons um, is such a big, important thing. And like, I find myself reminding myself of that a lot right now with this pregnancy and going, okay, like you can't work out right now because of X, Y, Z. And honestly, I love working out. <laughs> So I'd have to say, okay, you know, it's a season and this is what I have to do right now. And it is what it is, it, you know, and the thing is reminding myself that it's a season and that it's not my unforeseeable future is very helpful. Cause I think when we get down in the dumps of something that's hard, it's easy to go, it's always going to be like this. I'm always going to have to cook this food. I'm always going to hate cooking. I'm always going to hate this. But then, you know, we adapt, we change, circumstances change. And then you go, oh, I'm actually not doing that thing I hate anymore. It's awesome. (laughs) That's so true. And I'm really glad that I did the program over Christmas because that really showed you like 
I still enjoyed every holiday party that we went to. I still enjoyed hanging out with friends and family. I just didn't eat the same food that they did because I was in the elimination diet, but like I wasn't left out of anything. And I was lucky enough to have friends and family that were just like so happy that I was seeing results. And like, it kind of seemed like my stress had been lowered that they were in total support of it. But it's kind of nice to know, like every year when that goes by, it's like, you know, I could be doing this all the time. Like I did it once. I could do it again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think sometimes too, it also gives you a big sense of accomplishment to be like, that was hard and I did it. I have never, I I think, um, so we do the elimination portion of the program for probably 25 million reasons (laughs) Um, while we're working on other things. But one of the biggest things that I see is women will hear about the elimination and they just go, I can never do that. I can't do that. That's to, that's terrifying. That's way too hard. No, 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 no. I have never had somebody go through it and not say that was so much easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and it's because we set you up for it. Like you are mastering blood sugar balance before you head into this elimination So you're not heading into it hangry and cranky and, you know, not knowing where to find food sources and, and things like that. And it was awesome because you did give us like a, I don't want to say a warning, but you were made us aware like, okay, in two weeks, we're going to start this. So what can we get at the grocery store this week to stock up? And then the week before it was like, okay, we, and you were always there to support us and say like, we don't need to be worried. Like we're going to do this. And like, the biggest thing that I loved is because I'd done things like the 75 hard challenge before and like very like rigid, like you do this and you commit to it. And it was kind of nice that it was like, I, I remember you said like in the first week, I don't remember you saying it after the first week, but you're like, if we make a mistake, we're not going to completely start over. We're just going to move forward. Like if we accidentally ate something because we were somewhere and it had X whatever ingredient in it, we're just moving on because we're going to get the majority of the week down. And ev- I remember like always submitting our stuff every Friday um, and you would like review it and give, and you were great at giving tweaks. And once you had our like um, testing on there for the minerals in the Dutch test, you like told me, Hey, for um, once we we're out of the elimination diet, cause I always did like a lot of Starbucks meetings. You were like, just put coconut milk into it because that's what yeah. your body needs for your thyroid and the vitamin mm-hmm. D and all of that. Yeah, you needed all that potassium. I remember that. <laughs> yes. I am thyroid was, yeah, thyroid's like, please give me more potassium. I need it. Um, so, so good. So tell me, what would you tell to the Caitlin before or the woman that's like, I want to see results. I've tried things. They haven't worked. I'm scared to spend the money on myself. I'm scared I won't see results all of those things, what would you say to that woman? I would say it seems scary right now because you haven't done it. And it seems like a lot up front, like a lifestyle change, a huge investment change, um, a commitment that you're going to have to make. And like, depending on where you're at in life, like I think there was like four moms with young kids in that program. So it was like, this is also going to change like the family's dynamic, not in like a bad way, but um, for a while. It's totally worth it. For me specifically, this might not be the same way for everybody, but after going through your program, I was like healthy enough on all the metrics for work that my insurance premiums lowered so low. What? (laughs) What? And I, I was able to like stop taking some medications and my inhaler. So like as someone who like has a master's in business, I like ran the numbers. It was actually cheaper to do your program for a year and invest the money because I saved that much on the healthcare side. Like I actually profited off of going into your. (laughs) I am going to save that sound bite. (laughs) (laughs) Please do. I profited. Oh my gosh. But truly though, you actually profited in money. And in some people, a lot of people see that in spending less in supplements, spending less in medications, um, spending less in doctor's visits, spending less in chiropractic visits, spending less in like just health visits all around. But then what they get back as well in terms of like energy, sleep, relationships. Like, I mean, I have moms telling me that their kids are like, oh, mom, you're so happy now. Like, this is so fun to do this or whatever. 
We have husbands um, sending messages saying, thank you for giving me my wife back. Like, you know, so we're also gaining so much in that area, but I also love that I saved you money. (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) They and switching and getting rid of all those endocrine disruptors like that in the personal side of the budget that saves a ton of money too. But, and I would say Jake was like, I'm so happy you did this because he was hesitant. Like we just got engaged weddings coming up spending. And I was just like, I got to do this. And he's always said like, I think that's the best money you ever spent. Oh, I love that. I, I love that. I love it when they get so invested in that. I had someone who, when she started working with me, she had extreme like PMDD, but turns out she wasn't ovulating. And um, so obviously why she had very low progesterone. And we got her ovulating again, got mood swings stable, all the things. She ended up on getting engaged. She got married. She got pregnant a couple months afterwards. And she sent me a message and she goes, my husband said, I have to tell the hormone lady that we're pregnant because this wouldn't be possible if I wasn't ovulating. I love um, that. Yes. <laughs> um, it's, you know, I love it when they see that return with you, you know, it's, I think really just very cool. Okay. So before I see what any last words you have, if you're in any way interested in the Hormone Reset Program, I highly recommend booking a free call with one of my past alumni. And um, I know sometimes people are like, well, I want to talk to you. And you can. Pop in my DMs. I'd love to hear your story. But I also hear more often than not that you want to talk to my past clients. You want to hear the women who've been through the journey, not just me. You want to hear their stories. And so you can hop on and talk to one of my past clients. Um, They're going to go over your symptoms. They're going to see if it's a good fit um, for you in the first place because we aren't going to accept you, obviously, if we don't think that we can help you. So go to bit.ly slash HRP free call. And you can, um, their schedules should be, I was going to say wide open. They may not be wide open, but they should have some time for you. So hop on and chat with them. But do you have any last words, Caitlin, that you would like to share with all of our wonderful women on here? This is just a phenomenal program. And just thank you so much for everything, Leah, because ah, I'm getting choked up. <laughs> I came to you at a point in my life where I felt like it was pretty hopeless, like doctor's visits just everything. And ah, you gave me my life back. So thank you. You're so welcome. But also thank you to you. Like you have to give yourself that pat on the back because I tell this to women all the time. I can give you all the information. I can give you my proven methodology. I can put your labs together for you, but you have to implement it. And so like kudos to you for trusting yourself. Kudos to you for knowing that you deserved better, that you were worthy of feeling amazing and taking that massive leap of faith in yourself truly to know that you would you would follow through and you would do those things. So thank you so much for hopping on. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And the program itself, it's just, it's really amazing and you learn so much and you're just right there and so are your coaches to help. So yeah, they're awesome. We love them. 